Hi guys, Angel Warrior. Welcome back to Prepping USA. If you like what you hear here, hit thumbs up. If you don't, oh well. And if you want to be the first on your block to know what craziness I'm talking about, hit the bell icon. And uh, hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That way you'll be the first to be warned. I've been watching some other channels, folks, and one of the things that <coughs> seems to be a reoccurring role with some of these other channels is it too late to start prepping? No, folks, it's not. Let me tell you something. Now is the best time in the world to start prepping. Now, a lot of people, you would think after what happened back in March and April and May, and June, that they would start prepping. They would have started prepping back then, but they didn't. <coughs> Nobody expected Donald Trump to lose the election. Now people are panic buying because they keep hearing all these Democrats talking about about uh, another lockdown. Old doctor. You know, Doctor, Doctor Doom, uh, Fauci, or whatever he wants you want to call him. Is talking about another lockdown, folks. If it happens, that'll be the worst thing in the world to happen to this country. Now, is it too late? No. Get yourself out there and start buying. Now, you'll have to probably spend a little more. But my idea is, if you're a bachelor, 120 cans of each item that you eat. So that means about 20, 20 cases or 18 cases of uh, pinot beans, pork and beans. You know, beans are good for you, whether you know it or not. Uh, tortillas. You can put those, you can throw tortillas in the freezer if you need to. Tuna fish. Mackerel. Sardines. <coughs> Excuse me, folks, it's cold out here and I'm starting to cough. Now, why am I telling you these things? Because these are foods that will keep you alive, give you the calorie count you need. So, with you starting to prep, men, men need somewhere around 1,500, 2,000 calories a day. Women, need 12 to 1800 a day depending on their level of activity kids need at least a thousand calories every day or more <coughs> high caloric foods are better for them and you eat high caloric foods mostly at night before you go to bed that way your body, your body uh, will produce enough heat to keep you, keep you asleep all night long. Get, go down and buy plastic buckets, 50 pounds of beans and rice, put beans in one container, rice in another. I saw a video not too long ago of some beans, pinto beans, that was in a metal can, was put in there back in the 1960s. That was before we had mylar bags and everything. They pulled some of, some of the beans off the top, threw them away, and dug down in there 
and made a pot of beans with them. Everybody expected them to be bad. Beans are one of those forever foods, just about, no matter how you store them. Sorry folks, but my phone keeps going off here. So, rice, same way. Plastic, plastic buckets with lids, seal them up. And if you can come up with some oxygen absorbers and mylar bags to put them in, great. If you can't, hey, I've done it where I just put it straight in the, straight in the uh, plastic bucket. Now, do not use, do not use trash sacks. And I'll tell you why. Trash sacks have uh, chemicals on them that's designed to kill bugs and believe me it may not hurt you to start with but it may have a long-term effect and it may cause your your stuff you're putting in there to go bad <coughs> so ramen noodles I was just looking you can buy a case of 36 ramen noodles at Sam's the other day for $9. Box of spaghetti with six one-pound boxes, six one-pound bags in it was $4. You know, these are foods that you can you can make and use diversely. Rice is one of the most diverse foods. You know, I was I was shocked when I heard the other day 20% of the world eats rice daily and and some of those areas eat it two times a day or three. You know, I eat a lot of rice these days, folks. Even though I'm on a low-cal diet, I still eat a little rice. I'll have it at least once or twice a week. Freeze-dried foods. They're great. Expensive as all get out, but they're great. Dehydrated. Now that's one of the one of the pieces of equipment I think every prepper should have is a dehydrator or a way to dehydrate food. If you're using the oven or what. Because it'll last for quite a while. And if you bag it up with an oxygen absorber and seal it down real good, you know, there's no reason it shouldn't last five or six years. Then, salt, sugar, baking powder, uh, cornstarch, potato starch. These things is what you need in your homes to be able to, to have a meal. If, if you're not much into cooking, get cans of, cans of Campbell or Progresso or whatever it is you want. Take a, take a, uh, brick of ramen, heat it up, get it heated up and flexible and pliable, throw the, throw it in with your, your hungry man stew, soup, and now where you had a meal for maybe two or three, you've got a meal for four or five, <coughs> for under three dollars. Um, you know, it all goes to with whatever you need. Forever food, honey. You know, and you, we're going to do, do a video on taste deprivation. And stuff I think you need to have in, in your cabinet, cabinets to keep that from happening.
all kinds of spices. I am a fan. I'm a freak about spices. My family sometimes wonders why I've got so many boxes and so many jars of different spices. So, folks, with that being said, is, is it too late to start prepping? By no means is it. So, remember folks, if you're prepping, you live in free America. If you're not, oh well. And remember, it's better to have it, not need it, than need it, not have it. I'm the Ancient Warrior. We're out. <laughs>